Good morning. My name is Jack Womack. I'm one of the pastors at Hope Community United Methodist Church in Pasadena, Pasadena, Texas. We are a church that uh, works really hard to be the heart and hands and feet of Jesus in our community and, and throughout the world. We support a missionary in Brazil and we support mission projects here in our own community and in our larger community of the county. So many things we usually, or have done, I guess usually isn't a good word anymore. And I don't know whether we'll be able to accomplish those things this year. So many things are different because of a virus. And in the midst of that, we continue to talk about and lift up Jesus Christ. We we'll continue to attempt to fulfill the mission to go into all the world and make disciples. And from time to time, we get together like this and we encourage each other and lift up each other and remind each other of the power of the Holy Spirit. But there are so many distractions. I don't know if you've noticed, <laughs> that's a joke, how many distractions there are. But it seems like those that want to get a vaccine are now more often than not getting an opportunity. In my case, because I'm a <laughs> critical uh, care of whatever it is, old person I think is the word I'm looking for, uh, I was able to get my first shot and my second uh, through Methodist Hospital because I was a previous patient. Their records are so thorough because I was actually there for two different things over a period of time. Uh, I got a second invite from them. Of course, I couldn't share it with anyone. I had to just turn it back. And as of yesterday, I've got an offer from St. Luke's, so I had to turn it back, and I'm just praying and hoping that someone else gets to use that slot. Meanwhile, we've got stuff going on at the church, and we have a, a celebration of life on Saturday morning at the church. Masking and social distancing will be required. And we're scheduled to go to the National Cemetery on Monday. Well, we'll see how that goes. It appears that Monday may be a very cold day in the greater Houston area. Uh, I know at our uh, place a little further to the west, uh, they're forecasting 11 degrees. Uh, I just got to tell you, I was a police officer for a few years, and I served at a time in the Dallas area when it was 8 degrees and uh, had to be out on patrol and so forth, and I just want to tell you that's cold. Just in case you didn't know, that's cold. And for Houston, it's going to be frigid, and people need to protect their pets and their pipes and their plants and themselves. But we did gather here today to uh, do a little Bible study. And so uh, I want to read today from the Gospel of Mark. It's in the seventh chapter. And for those of you that may not have been around that long with relationship in the ministry that I've been a part of. Mark is my favorite of the Gospels. There's always great messages in the Gospel of Mark. Today it's in the seventh chapter. It begins with the 24th verse. From there he set out and went away to the region of Tyre. Other ancient authorities may have said Sidon. He entered a house and did not want anyone to know he was there. Yet he could not escape notice. 
But a woman whose little daughter had an unclean spirit immediately heard about him. She came and she bowed down at his feet. Now the woman was a Gentile of Syrophoenician origin. She begged him to cast the demon out of her daughter. He said to her, let the children be fed first. For it's not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. But she answered him, sir. Others may have translated that to say, Lord, or even others might have just said yes. Even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. Then he said to her, for saying that you may go. The demon has left your daughter. So she went home, found the child lying on the bed, and the demon gone. May God add his blessing to the reading of this, his holy word. We might read a scripture like this and say, what was up with Jesus? Is, is he God? Did he come to save the world? or? Did he only come to save some? What's up with him telling her no? So I, I don't know, there's, there's a few lessons we might learn from this. And I, I think one of the most persistent messages is that persistence works. I remember some 20 years ago answering God's call to ministry. And me, like so many other people that I know and like Peter in the Bible, I looked at the plan and jumped in with both feet. I uh, resigned from my secular job I accepted a kind of a menial job, if you will, at a church. And without really giving it any thought that it might not work out, I sent an application in to seminary, wrote them a little paper, and whatever fees were needed to be submitted, and expected to be accepted and go to seminary and become a Methodist preacher. Well, in a few days I received back a letter that said, I'm sorry, sir, you're not qualified to come to seminary. In so many ways, it was kind of like this woman being told she wasn't qualified to get her daughter healed. So I didn't say anything about dogs or crumbs, but I was persistent and asked the question, why? Well, it turns out that my undergraduate education was a good education, but I didn't have stellar grades. And they were not scored in the same way that the grades were at seminary. And so they didn't take into account the difference in the years past and the scoring differences. And they just said, frankly, your scores just weren't good enough. Well, I'd already resigned from a secular job. Mike could have gone back, I, I don't know. Had already accepted a job working in Christian ministry and was enjoying it and being fulfilled and I think fulfilling God's call. And so much like this Syrophoenician woman, I continued to say, why? Through that persistence, there was eventually an alternative offered, which I was able to fulfill, different than the Syrophoenician woman in that case, because she really had to do anything. 
And so roughly three months later, I began my seminary education. Me or I, like the Syrophoenician woman, heard God calling, knew where the results or, or successes could be found, didn't know how to get them, but never took no for an answer. Now you might say, well, yeah, that's great, preacher, but so what? Well, as time passed, I've been able to be a part of families with weddings and marriages. I've been able to be a part of families through the grief and loss of a loved one. I've been beside the bed of a dying person and I've been a part of Numerable baptisms of babies coming into the world. All I know is that if you're committed to be a Jesus follower, Jesus will use you if you let him. Jesus used the Syrophoenician woman to show us that the saving grace of Jesus Christ is obtainable. No matter who you are, no matter your gender, your race, those things become way less important when it comes to the business of Jesus removing the demons of our life. I look now and see the way that people persist and move forward. And so many are driven, but so many are driven by something not Christ-like. They're driven by power by being accepted into communities even if they have to give up their ethics, their beliefs, their morals. I think it's important for us to realize that the humanity of Christ is the reason that we have Christ. For us to see that, that even our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ sometimes struggled with what to do. But in the end, because he was who he is, he was always able to fulfill the call that God put him on earth for. It's my prayer, friends, that you get the opportunity to fulfill your call. that you get the opportunity to be whatever God has called you to be. Maybe that's not to work full-time Christian ministry, not as a career, not as a place to make a living, but we're all called a full-time Christian ministry. Not just on Sunday, when we sit there prim and proper in a church somewhere, but every day, as we find ways to be accepting, to be loving, to be merciful, to be fair, it seems to me that fairness is frequently obstructed by fear. I'm afraid to say those guys are right because my friends might not like what I say. I'm afraid to stand up for what I really believe because that's not what I learned growing up or that's not the way someone else taught me. 
I don't know. Sometimes there are just more questions than there are answers. But I know at the end of the day, what we pray for and what we live for is that by being persistent and telling God no matter what we want, His blessing, His love, His favor, even under the most dire circumstances when our loved ones are near the end, are sick, or when our own lives seem just overcome with misery and trouble. If we could just keep going back to the Lord, asking for guidance and for healing, asking for God to bless not just us, but those that we don't like, those that are hurting, Right now with this virus, I pray that people can focus on what's good in the world, the hope of the world, the ways in which good things happen even in the midst of all of this craziness. You, Many of you have heard me say, and if not, I'll say it now, this is the time I think that God called us to live not so that we can live through the misery and the inconvenience of masks and social distancing, but so that we can live through the times of masks and social distancing and the fear of a virus to show the world that we place our faith in the God who sent his son to become God on earth for us to show us what it's like to be a follower of Jesus. To make a difference in the world and to truly be the heart and hands and feet of Jesus Christ in this community, in our families, and throughout the whole world. This Phoenician woman, she didn't ask for anything for herself. King Solomon, when he went to the Lord and the Lord said to him, what can I do for you? He didn't pray for wealth. He didn't pray for success. He prayed for wisdom. Now God gave him wisdom. And because he was selfless, he wasn't looking for things for himself. God also gave him success and comfort. Now, I believe God will do the same thing for you. And I pray that today, if never before, you'll approach this day, this day, the most important day we have to live with the power of the Holy Spirit, with the teachings of Jesus and the knowledge that God, our creator, created us for good. Today, just today, I'm gonna to do my best to do all the good I can. Hopefully, I'll be able to avoid doing harm. But I know that I can't do any of those things if I don't stay in love with God. Let's pray. Gracious and loving God, the scriptures come to us in so many different ways and sometimes we understand them in so many different ways. Today, God, let's just take it simply that if we approach you with the desire for our world to be saved, somehow you will use us to be a part of that saving grace and we'll all do it in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Friends, I hope you have a great day. I really do hope that you stay warm and stay out of this frigid cold weather unless you have to be out. God bless you. I hope to see you soon. In the name of Jesus Christ, friends, have a blessed and wonderful day.